Hi everybody, this is Ron Brewington. Welcome to Actors Choice. Today we've got a very wonderful actress, singer, dancer, and she's beautiful. Please welcome Wanda Way Willis. Hi, hello. Hi. How you doing? Thank you for coming today. Thank nice you so, so, so you. much. <laughs> Wanda, it, uh, we, we got a lot to talk about over the next hour, and we want to start with talking about the fact that your resume is impressive, and you, re you tell us a lot about yourself. But tell us where it all began for you. Um, I started out when I was very young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> way back when I was in preschool, in nursery school, I was the one who did all the solos and did all the things out front and, you know, um, stood out among the children, had the main parts. And then as I got older, in church, when I was very young, I used to sing in church, sing solos, and when my grandmother would take me to church, I was this little, like maybe four or five, I would sing and clap in church, <laughs> sitting in her lap, and had such a good time. And mm -hmm. then I joined the church choir. I did a lot of solos at church, Vernon Temple Church in Bermuda, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how it all started. And from then, it went to performing at live events in Bermuda. I was asked to do a lot of major events mm -hmm. that were held there, and people's weddings and funerals and you name it, birthdays, and then I joined a band there and was doing a lot of weddings and other functions, and um, I, I kind of taught myself a bit of the piano when I was very young. I, I entered the Bermuda National Anthem Contest. They were looking for a national anthem, so I only had piano classes for about six months mm -hmm. um, because my teacher, she left the island, mm -hmm. and it was difficult to get another teacher. But... Um, from looking at the piano and what I had learned already, I wrote a song called Bermuda My Home and entered it into the national anthem competition. But How did it, you it do? didn't it didn't win, but but when people heard the song, they loved it because it was what they chose was a very complicated song. It was more like a classical song and mine was very simple whereby the youngest child could sing that song and sing it out with feeling. You know, and, and that's the way anthems should be sung, yes. I think. Yes. And that's the way we should sing. Mm -hmm. I tell the children at, going back to that with children, I tell the children at my children's choir at St. Paul's United Methodist Church that I'm in charge here of. Here in Los Angeles? Yes, here. Okay. I live in, it's in Redondo Beach. Okay. I live in Redondo Beach. And that's the thing I tell them every time I say, why do we sing? When we sing? When we sing, we want the people to feel feel what we're singing about <laughs> and they just smile and grin and so when they sing you can really feel yes. what they're singing about and yes. and that's that's when I sing that's what I try to do as a singer okay. yes and so from there I went away to school I left Bermuda um, okay. when I was a teenager right after I graduated from high school in fact I um, went to Morgan State University good school I graduated Baltimore. in May yes. graduation was in May I was in the first semester at Morgan State University in Baltimore. I loved that mm -hmm. experience. Um, and um, I went there and I took part in the theatrical events there mm -hmm. and regional events. I was in Pearly Victorious. I played Ludabelle Gossamay Jenkins. That was with the arena players in Baltimore. Was this your first acting bug? I believe so, other than the little things I did when I was growing up and in school, because in high school I did play. Jean Scott Louise Finch, To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> I played the young yes, one, yes, and yes. it was so much fun. It was so much fun. We got a write-up in the newspaper with mm -hmm. my picture and pictures of other actors through, who were there as well. Um, um, it, was, it was a wonderful experience. So there, and then when I went abroad, I took part in as many theatrical pl um, productions I could could be involved in. I also was a member of the Ira Aldrich Players okay. at Morgan State University, which was a wonderful theatrical group. Yes, We did this wonderful, fun musical called um, Mushy Mouth, and I, my part was, I am whiny mouth. <laughs> I was whiny mouth. <laughs> and it was a comedy, and it was fabulous. And we did, um, I danced in a musical that they had there called... Um, they are not known, something to that effect, title. And I was a dancer, and I danced that that wonderful dance, the Alien Head, a, um, help me out, Alvin Ailey, Alvin Ailey. has a okay. famous dance that they do with the 
the wide white ruffled skirts and the umbrellas. I can't think of the name. Yes. <laughs> but I was in that dance, in that production. Um, and I played an ingenue in another play that was there at um, Morgan State. The Ira Aldridge players really were wonderful. Yes, they and were. also the arena players of Baltimore. Yes, that was were. the regional theatrical group that I became a part of. They did some wonderful plays. Billy No Name. Um, they did Pearly Victorious, as I said. And, oh. and, and those events, when you get involved in theater like that, mm -hmm. you rehearse for long, long periods, periods of time. time. Yes. You don't ever have a, uh, a production where you have rehearsal and everybody just comes and they, they do the play down one time and it's finished. No, you're there for hours. I'm glad to hear you say that because oh, it's you not can. fair to us in the audience that you don't practice. We need oh, that yes. practice. Thank you. You, you Thank don't you. only, and, I'm, and you also mm -hmm. don't only have to practice on your own. You do that yeah. mm -hmm. as well as when you come to rehearsal. Mm -hmm. I remember going to rehearsals um, for theatrical productions. You go in at 10 in the morning. Sometimes you don't leave until the next day. Good. And while you're there, you're not dilly-dallying. No. You're going to a corner. You are working on your craft. You're doing it over and over. It was such a wonderful experience for me. Mm. And when I do theatrical productions here, uh -huh. I try to do that. Good. You know, Good if, if time allows. Time because allows, yes. a lot of times um, the theatrical productions I've been in here, we only have a certain time yeah. to rehearse. Yeah. We have the place to rehearse, and we have it, so most of it is done in my home, on gotcha. my own, in my gotcha. own little corners. <laughs> Beside the, besides you, what other famous people came out of that school in Baltimore? Oh, what is his name? He was in the play um, Mushy Mouth. Um, <laughs> oh, you've got me. I know Carl Williams okay. kept telling me of a guy. Oh, what is his name? I can't think of his name, but he was a famous actor. Okay. He's a famous actor. Um, that's a funny story because when I first came to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. I would always treat myself to George's. Who remembers George's? <laughs> oh, I love that place. I would go there once a month to treat myself to dinner. The mm -hmm. food was so good. It was, oh, it was great. It was earned by Denzel Washington and Norm Nix. Yes. I remember that. And um, I went there one time and I sat down and I said, um, can I have a soda? You know, I was sitting at the bar and... Um, the bartender turned around and said, is that Wanda Raina? Because Raina yes. is my, my, my born name. Mm -hmm. And I, he turned around and he said, it is Wanda from Morgan State. <laughs> we both went to Morgan State together. So <laughs> that was so funny. Uh. I thought that was so funny. Mm. It's just a coincidence. Sometimes things in life happen serendipitously. Yes. yes. And God those are the things you, you grab and you hold on. You cherish mm -hmm. forever those mm -hmm. memories. Yes. So, um. And I, I think his name, there was an actor, he's a comedian now, mm -hmm. who, um, oh, I can't think of his name, but he was in Mushy Mouth, and he's a famous comedian now. Okay. And he played the part of, he wore a red cape, he played the part of, um, he was the evil one in the class. Because it, it was based on a, a group of classmates together okay. in a classroom. Okay. Mushy mouth, whiny mouth, and it was fun. <laughs> Mushy mouth. It was, it was, his first name was Tony, I think. I think his first name was Tony. Okay. Yeah. But right. um, You have yes. such natural talent. Oh, thank you. Acting looks like it was just something that you just, like, hand in glove. Yeah, you, you saw that when you came to Lonely Girl. Yes, I, I did. I was glad we'll you were able to Girl, see that. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you just love well, that. Play. And what I've love seen it. of you, and just knowing you as a person, mm -hmm. you have that personality that one must have. You know, I, 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 I hate this is a little point that I love to make. A lot of people walk around all day long with a bad attitude. Yes. They're mean and nasty. Ooh. They forgot one small thing. God let you get up this morning. That's right. So you shouldn't be <laughs> so did. nasty about it. You know? He did. Yeah. And that's a. That's an honorable thing that he did that because some people didn't wake up. This exactly. Morning. exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just or they woke up with pain and had to be rushed to the hospital. You just, yeah. you just never know. Okay. You know. Well, let's take a look at some of the roles that you've <laughs> played in your life. This is Wanda Ray Willis, actress. Yes. Okay, we have a little technical difficulty. We'll talk a little bit more. Maybe we can get it up for just a second. Uh, the roles that you've had, some of these yes. roles. Did you, how do you pick the roles that you got? Um. Well. I didn't have a lot of choices, okay. but usually when I would go for a role, an audition, okay. I would get the role. Sometimes, though, I 
I would get the call back and I wouldn't get the role. For right. instance, um, I auditioned for uh, uh, Benjamin Benjamin Banneker, the, the clockmaker. Yes. The movie with Brad Pitt, mm -hmm. when he was a he was a clockmaker. Mm -hmm. It was based on the story of the clockmaker, right. and I auditioned for the part of his wife, Benjamin. That's it. Not Benjamin Banneker. Benjamin Banneker was a famous person who drew, drew maps and made clocks. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that. But Benjamin Buttons. And I auditioned for the part. I, I got the call back, mm -hmm. and I thought that I was going to get the part. And my agent, he also thought, he said, this is made for you, it was a Creole lady mm -hmm. who was the clockmaker's wife. And I read the script because I got the sides. I read mm -hmm. the script, and the script was a letter from our son who had passed away. So it was a very tearful, touching scene. Mm -hmm. And after I read the casting people, their mouths just fell open. They had tears in their eyes. Yes. And I said to my, my heart was saying, ooh, I nailed this. I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. I got the call back, but then I didn't get the part. And then when I saw the, when I saw the movie, mm -hmm. I saw the lady who got the part. And they apparently decided to go with someone who had um, browner skin and she looked a little older. So, yeah, sometimes things like that. Because they, they have in their mind mm -hmm. an idea of what they want. Yes. And then another role I tried out for a speaking role um, for the West Wing. Remember that pro yes, program, the West Wing? Yes. Well, White the House part House. was for the mm -hmm. ambassador of Bermuda okay. at a wedding reception. Okay. Now, my agent said again, now this role is made for you. <laughs> I went in, auditioned for the role, yes. got a call back, and they gave it to a lady who was darker skin, and she had dreadlocks, and she looked, she was older, and she spoke, because I got to hear some of the other auditions, she spoke more like with an English accent. Okay. Now, I'm Bermudian. I have a Bermudian accent, <laughs> and they chose. So sometimes the, it happens like that, because they have the, a picture in their mind. They probably figure Bermuda's an English colony, so the, the person should speak with more of an English accent, accent. which is not true. Bermudians don't speak with an English accent. Some of them do, who have been away to school, and they bring that back with them. Yes. But for the most part, uh, a Bermudian accent... Are, are, and there's several in the country, I have to say that too, before somebody, what are you talking about, <laughs> balks at me. Because in my family alone, we have three different ways we speak. We speak English, but different. My mother has gotcha. a different way of speaking. I am similar to my mother, so much so that when I pick up the phone in Bermuda, oh, they say, hi, Barbara, how are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's me. And my dad has a different way, different um, um, accent when speaking. And so does my brother, so... Gotcha. It's, there you have it. Well, Ron, yeah. our engineer says we're ready to take a look oh, at some good, of your you have, mm -hmm. some of your work, ladies and gentlemen. Wanda Ray Willis.
in that too. If you can get away, yes. why don't you come up to my changing room and keep me company? Okay? Uh, Miss Dan? And waiting, their wide eyes are begging. Talented lady here with us today. Thank Very you. talented. You talked earlier before we showed saw the video about auditions. Yes. What's your feeling about auditions? Give me more. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anybody say that before. Most people they argue, fuss, and fight. <laughs> they don't like auditions. They it's something they have to oh, do. Oh, I, I love auditions because you know what it does for me. I put out my very best. Not that I don't when I'm on stage or in uh -huh. front of the camera working, but I put out my very best. And it gives me a sense of power that, oh, I've done it. And I've done my very best. And even if I don't get the role or the part, I still feel like I've accomplished something. Because the next one, I'll be on a different level when I go to the audition. And it just builds and builds and builds. So give me more. <laughs> <laughs> what about roles that you Challenges. want to take? Um, I, I won't do any nude roles. Okay. Um, I, I won't do... I won't woman? do any... No, I won't do that. Because if, if I was a lesbian, I would, but I'm not. So okay. I won't do a role like that. Um, and I have nothing against right. anything like that, bi people or mm -hmm. um, bisexual people, etc. cetera. Um, I think that's about it. Mostly nude roles, nudity, okay. and uh, a lesbian role. I, I wouldn't do a lesbian role. Because you're seeing in, in today's Hollywood, you're seeing a lot of these roles where women are, I won't say forced, but they're put to these, and it's about money mm -hmm. sometimes. You know, you might need the money. And poor young lady yeah. will say, gee whiz, uh, if I don't do that, then I won't be able to get what I want to do and can't mm -hmm. live. I mean, we talk about casting couch. We talk about all these <clears> things <throat> that are part of Hollywood. Right, right. Yeah, part of Hollywood. I, as far as the nudity and or as being a part of Hollywood and having to sleep with someone to get a role or do lurid acts with someone to get a role, I am not going to do that. So I just won't get the role. Okay. <laughs> I want people to, and it may be, uh, what do you call it, putting rose colored glasses on, you can call it what you may, but I want to get roles because of my talent and what I do with my talent. I want to get a rule because of how I come across as a professional person who can claim that rule and bring that paper to life on a stage, in a park, um, on radio, on music, on uh, in a movie studio. Bring that part that's on that black and white paper to life because that's where it starts. An yes. idea in the head of a writer bringing that role to life. That's the way I want to get roles in this business. Mm. So You told us that what made you an actor, but my question to you is what makes you stay in this business, especially what you just said, and, and sometimes mm -hmm. how hard it is to get a role? <clears throat> what makes you stay? <laughs> what really makes me stay is, is that all the little things I do, they, they always seem to add up to bigger things. And they keep adding up to bigger things and bigger, bigger things. And when I do the little things and someone from the industry points out to me, that was a really good scene. Or, Wanda, you, you know, I can see you doing this, 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 or this. That encourages me. And so I keep going. And then also, and most fortunate that I am to have the parents that I have. My parents, they really encouraged me. My dad, from the time growing up, told me, Wanda, you can do and be whatever you want and have whatever you want. The world is your oyster. And I really feel that 
you know, children need to be told that, that they can achieve anything in spite of, in spite of the things you have to go through before you go to school in the morning or the things you have to go through on your way to school in the morning. In spite of all that, God has brought you safely to the classroom. He's brought you safely to where you, wherever you are. You might not have a lot of friends around you, right. but he's always there with you. So you can achieve whatever you want in spite of. I'm always telling children that, always. I, re I remember when I was teaching, because I'm also an educator, I had students in my class who were brilliant. And they would tell me, they would say, Miss Willis, my mama says I don't have to get good grades because I'm just going to be on the floor. And I'm not lying. They would tell me these stories. Mm -hmm. And we don't have money to, to send you to university. So you don't have to worry about getting good grades. And I would tell them and talk to them till I was blue in the face. I would give them also my example. I would say, if you want to further your education, there, there is financial aid out there. You can Certainly go is. into a financial aid office, yes. fill out the forms, and you can get financial aid to go and further your education. Um, because when I got my master's, I went to the financial aid office and I got money, assistance, to pay for my master's. Mm -hmm. And and I keep telling them they can do the same thing. So sure can. you can do whatever you want. The world is your oyster. Right. Because I right. see sometimes when you look at the United Negro College Fund and other big places like that, they mm -hmm. offer a lot of scholarships. And at the end yes. of the year, very few people go get them. Right. Very few. Very That's few the, people get them. And I, you know, I think that mm -hmm. somebody should uh, mobilize together. Uh, uh, and if anybody wants to get involved, they can go to my website, wanderaywillis.org, and let me know because I want to be a part of it. We should mobilize and make sure and that these kids who are brilliant know about these scholarships that, that at the end of the year, they're not used. Right. So I will help, just my website, wanderaywillis.org. And if people know about them and we can actually help them fill out the forms if they need help, we, we need to do that. Exactly. So the money is not wasted. Children's minds are not wasted. Yes. And they can, we can help them to reach their full potential. So. Exactly. Let me know. Because I don't. I tell people when I get depressed, and sometimes we get depressed, but I have a wall in my house. I call it my I love me wall. Oh. There's my associate <laughs> degree up there. There's my mm -hmm. bachelor's degree up there. There's my master's degree and other degrees and things. That That's that a great that idea. Life. And it makes I you feel good. You You've wall. accomplished something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting to note when some people die, they have that much space in the obituary. Other, what do they do in life? They were mm -hmm. born, they lived the life, and they died. What else right. did they do? They didn't... Um try to help anybody no. or, or anything like that. So. Indeed. Well, so, you, what's more challenging to you as an actor, uh, standing on a stage or standing on a set with a full crew? <laughs> uh, I would have to say standing on set with a full crew because from the little experience I have had with that, mm -hmm. you have to do what you're doing or say what you're saying over and over again. And um, there are the, the lights, there's this, there's um, just so much more involved. It's, it's a challenge, I've done it, I love it, but if I had to make a definition which is more challenging, it's, it's that, because of all those factors. Okay. Um, you have to do the scene over and over again, and uh, you want to, Make sure you're doing exactly what the director says. Sometimes he'll tell you, say, this has come to, and on the word to, he wants it to you to move two spots, two steps to the left, and then for the word past, you have to move two spots to the right. So it's very direct. I mean, it's very, um, very concise and direct like that. So it's, I still do, I've still, still done it successfully, but, mm -hmm. um, that to me is more of a challenge than gotcha. with theater. You're out there, you're, you're naked, it's an open book. You cannot yes. stop, yes. you know, you cannot stop. And, and that to me is, is uh, I, I could say, it's freer for me to do that mm -hmm. rather than do something over and over and over. You know, I, I'm successful at that as well, but, but on stage it's, oh, 
You can't stop. You no, can't, can't stop the cameras. No. You got to keep going and going and going. And I, I'm a person who really likes challenges. So. Got you. <laughs> How do you stay current? I mean, the technology changes, people change. How do you stay current? I read a lot. Um, and I'm always... Uh, especially um, looking on the internet at different things that okay. that come about and you know I get my SAG after magazine that lets me know certain items that you need <laughs> now this has changed no more black and whites you need three quarters you need this you need that yes. so <laughs> um, yeah so that's how I keep current yeah because it's to your advantage to stay current Oh, yes, you have to. I mean, you it's hard to. enough that you, as I hate to say it, but it's hard enough that you're black to, to, to try to get mm -hmm. a role. You, have, you know, and yes. I, I, it's, it's just one of those things you got to do. Black and a light skinned black. Oh, that's another story. That's another story. That's a whole program right there. I've got a story, or a short story about Please. myself. I was on the, I auditioned and got a part to be the chooser on the dating game, and they revived. I think okay. it was in 94 or, or was it 2004? I don't remember the date. It might have been 2004. And um, I got the part and I went into the studio and went to the makeup artist and took her my bottle of foundation that matched my skin tone. Mm -hmm. She looked at it and said, oh, no, no, we're not going to use that. They proceeded to put darker colored makeup on my face for my base. Then for my lips, they out, you know how you put a lip liner on yes. your lips, around your lips? Right. They outlined my lips away from my line to make my lips look bigger. Oh, my God. And put lipstick on me. So after she finished, you know, doing everything, and I said, I said oh, thank you. I went in the green room. I took a napkin. I took all that makeup off my face. Bless you. And Go I ahead. put my own makeup on. Go ahead. And that's the way I did the show. And they didn't notice it because they didn't stop me. Hmm. So, but I was, so that's one example. And that was in 2004. They wanted me to look darker than I was. And, hmm. and, um, and even, even Dorothy went through things like that. They gotcha. told her she was too light and, you know, the studios wanted colored looking, colored people. But we're the rainbow race. Exactly. Black people are, we have light, dark, brown, in between, you right. know, um, there, there's a um, there's a beautiful children's um, card uh, activity where it has all the representations of all the colors we are. I mean, some people are like vanilla ice cream. Yes. Some are like a well done turkey, yes. fresh out of the oven. Some are like the deep dark chocolate, chocolate brown. Oh, I love that deep chocolate. <laughs> Black of the birds. Oh, <laughs> you know, some are you know it goes. Some are like the color of the peach. Yes. So, you know, we're the rainbow race, we come in all different colors. <laughs> okay. Speaking of which, a very special role came into your life as an actress. Her name is Dorothy Dandridge. Yes. <laughs> minutes and hey we're moving around the rain club here in lovely studio city on ventura boulevard if you want to come by it's one two two five five ventura boulevard it's upstairs when you go downstairs you see chin chin restaurant it's upstairs in this fantastic room in front of me i have miss wanda ray Willis, who is performing here at the rain club tonight second set for those of you that make first but more importantly my girl is doing a one-woman Dorothy Dandridge show at the Vintage in Hollywood, May 5th. It starts May 30th. It starts May 30th. And it's Lonely Girl, a secret life of Dorothy It's called Lonely Girl, which is the secret life of Dorothy Dandridge. Can you tell us, how did you get attached to this kind of project? Um, sassy Get Hard. I know Sassy. Yes. yes. Dorothy Dandridge. Yes, there was However, you do have a 
an aura. I have to say, I watched a lot of things with Dorothy Vanderjanet. Not only was she stunning. Okay, well, that was uh, an interview that was done with Os Osiris, good friend. Uh, but we were with Dorothy Dandridge. Dorothy Dandridge. A lot of people don't know who she was. Who is or was Dorothy Dandridge? Oh, where do I start? Mm. Oh, she was. Mm, she achieved lots of firsts in the industry. She was the first first black woman to be on the cover of Life magazine in 1954. In 1955, she was the first actress, black or white, to be making $300,000 a year. This was before even Elizabeth Taylor. She was the first black to perform at the Waldorf Historia Hotel in New York, who didn't even allow blacks there to perform. Oh, she, she, was, she did so many firsts. She was so many first. She was, uh, she was born in Cleveland, Ohio. She was the, f and also she was the first black international film star in the history of major motion pictures. She was known throughout Europe, all over the world, they knew her. Um, she really helped to pave the way for women of color to achieve that high salary and status in the industry gotcha. and she fought like tooth and nail to get there she was she's a story of in spite of if you ever want to know a story of in spite of she she was raped as a young child mm -hmm. by the woman auntie mama who her mother ruby left her and her sister viv with when she would travel because her mom was a traveling musician and performer um and in spite of all of that, she, she achieved so much. I think the, the stage was her freedom from that. You know, as a young child, she was performing from age five um, all, over, all over the South. And, um, and then she, they came to Los Angeles in 1929, and they got, tried to get work here. Now, she had a hard time getting work because she was too light. The studios wanted colored looking, colored people. And so uh, Viv and, and her, and along with Ada Jones, they formed the Danger Sisters. And they went to places like Bakersville, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Long Beach, okay. Santa Ana, Santa so, Barbara, mm -hmm. and they got working. They were performing all over down the air. Oh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then throughout her career, she even introduced speaker Martin Luther King at, a, at an event. She was very, also very politically inclined. She spoke out about the unjust things that were done to black people. And she was, um, she was also labeled communist for a while until she wrote a nasty letter to the organization, um, to the studios, who let her know that um, she was labeled as one of the communist people in the in the community, and she wrote a letter, and then that stopped that because she was not communist. She was she just happened to be at a party where there were some civil rights people speaking out against the unjust things that were happening to blacks at the time. Can you imagine living in a society like that, and aspiring and reaching and achieving the goals that she did? Mm -hmm. I call her my in spite lady. She's a very good inspiration to many of us. Mm. With, with all she had to go through, and she still achieved everything she did. Yes. And I'm not telling you everything. I mean, there were a host of movies, 40 movies she was in, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and on and on. But she is an in spite, lay, in spite of person. And if she can achieve all of that, we have nothing to do but try to do what we want to do and achieve what we want to achieve in spite of the things we have to go through in this time period. Wow. Yes. How I Met Wanda was on November 15th. I had the pleasure mm -hmm. of coming to a, 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 the, the Vintage Hollywood Theater yes. in here in Los Angeles. And there was a play going on called Lonely Girl, The Secret Life of Dorothy Dandridge. Mm -hmm. And I got in there, went in there, got my seat, got my drink, got my program. <laughs> there was a little hassle going on. We, get, we took care of that. <laughs> and then they said the, the, the band started to play. And the lights went down. And lady, you walked out there on that set 
Yes. And the rest is history. <laughs> how did you get at that role? Tell us about how you got the role. Um, Sassy Gail Hart, a friend of mine from New York, but she now lives in Los Angeles. She told me that Leroy Richardson III, the writer, was looking for someone to play Dorothy. So she gave me Leroy's phone number and I went in and auditioned with Leroy and he liked my presentation. And that's how I got the role. Now you put your heart and soul into that role. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting there watching you perform. Oh, I love that play. Tell us about what, what when people come to see the play, what are they <sighs> seeing? Well, first of all, you're going to feel just by being in the presence of if it's in when it's, if it's in vintage Hollywood, yes. you're gonna feel that nostalgia of old Hollywood. You'll see posters of Dorothy, huge five by, oh, five by, huge ones, five by three posters, pictures, live photographs, not just posters, and you will see posters of some of her. Things from also uh, Josephine Baker, you see cases, glass cases with jewelry she wore, different booklets, etc. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then when I walk on stage, you're gonna see you're going to see me channeling Dorothy Dandridge because that's that's what I that's what I do I just I just channel her I I know my script I know the research I've done and all the research that went into Leroy's production and um, I've also I also researched her because this is not the first time I played Dorothy I was Dorothy Dandridge in North on South Central's um, South Central Avenue, on Central Avenue, mm -hmm. for four years, and they won four NAACP Theater Image Awards. And I played Dorothy for four years, traveling all around California and Los Angeles, Long Beach, all over. We did Stella Adler in, in up in Hollywood. I mean, you name it, Santa Monica Theater. Lots of theaters. That was a wonderful production as well. And so I did a lot of research for that as well. But I always, always, even before I came to Los Angeles, when I lived on the East Coast, I used to get everything I could get my hands on about Dorothy Dandridge, Josephine Baker, all the Donald Bogle books. He's a famous writer. Everything I could get my hands on, I would get um, Dinah Washington, Billie Holiday, all the information, um, uh, DVDs periodicals, everything I can get my hands on and study them. And, because um, they're, they're my idols. They, I mean, they fought through it all to become the best in the industry. They were the best in the industry. And so, and, and also I'm going way back now. When I was growing up in Bermuda, <laughs> this is what you'll see on stage too when you come to the play, because all of what's inside of me is what you see on stage. It's not just the script. You don't ever see just a script with me on stage. You see me channeling Dorothy. You see me channeling my background of when people, especially my Aunt Dora, rest her soul, she was from New York, and she would come to Bermuda, where I'm from. And when I was a little tot, I used to be around the house singing and dancing and smiling and having fun, and she would tell my mom and dad, Barbara and Alden, you need to take her to Hollywood. She reminds me so much of that little Dorothy girl I see before <laughs> and so there you know Dorothy and I do have some similarities so what you see is not just the script though oh the wonderful costumes, oh, the costumes and the changes. glorious set oh, beautiful and the shoes mm -hmm. and the gowns and oh my gosh mm. and the furniture that beautiful furniture I call that my Dorothy set because when you just look at that set you say, hmm, that's a Dorothy set, even before I even step onto the stage. So you, you see that and you see all of what I am from my background coming onto, onto the set. I recall that day that your family was there, your mother yes. and your father were there. Tell <laughs> us about that, how they felt. Oh, after the show, my mom said, I am still shaking. <laughs> she said, Wanda, they love you, they love you. She said, now I know why you're still doing this. And she said, I'm still shaky, Wanda. And my dad said, oh, I'm so proud of you, Wanda. And my brother said, good job, Wanda, good job. 
So, and it, I was so, my spirit was just so full that they would come and see yes. the production. I was so honored. And oh my goodness, one time during the one of the shows, um, Arcel Trutman, he's a photographer, mm -hmm. he took a lot of pictures of the show for me, for us. His mother was there. She is 93 years old this year, the same age that Dorothy would have been this year had she lived. I was nearly, into, and I'm tearing up now. When she, when I came to meet her, she had her, she stretched her arms out, and she said, "I love you, I love you," and I nearly cried because it was so feeling. And she said, "I'm 93 years old. I'm the same age Dorothy would have been had she lived," and that that was one moment that I would never forget in um, in um, during the run of the play. Um, that would, that's a moment I will never, never, never forget. And his mom said that to me. Wow. Yeah, that's one of, and there are other moments. Yes. Ruta Lee came to the show yes, and Ruta Lee was she time. pointed yes. to the audience and said, you 10,000, you 10,000, you, you 20, you 20, get this girl <laughs> on Broadway. She right. deserves to be on Broadway. And, um, oh, one of the first shows, um, the lady from Good Times was there. Um, Jeanette Dubois, yes. she held out her arms and she came up to the stage after the show and hugged me. And she said, Wanda, I want you to be in my movie, to play my daughter in my movie. She said, you were fabulous. So, And Cy Richardson came. Cy Richardson, and long-time oh, actor. He was standing toward yes. the back and at the end of the show when I came out, he stood up and said, I am so proud of you. And I used to take classes with him in, in Soho mm -hmm. up in... Um, up near Universal City, he had an acting class on Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. And so for him, and Mickey Stevenson came to the show. Yes. He'd been three times to the show. H.B. <laughs> Barnum had, has been two times, three times to the show. Oh, so when, when people who are in the industry, professionals like that, um, let me know that I'm doing the right thing and that I, I've done something that they can say they're proud of me doing. That also keeps me going forward in the industry, in spite of, yes. in spite, spite of. of. You know, I, I lost my my two dogs, and I have one dog left. In spite of yes. divorces, in some ways, <laughs> Dorothy Dandridge and I have has have some very close similarities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm a witness myself uh, to sit there and just in. Now, the play lasts something like what two hours long. Yeah, it's about including the, the intermission. intermission. Right. Yes. And I mean, you were up on the stage the entire time, changing your clothes, singing, opening up packages. You didn't miss any <laughs> step. You know exactly what was going on. This is a yes. historical thing, and that's what I enjoy about it. Last week we had a gentleman named Stogie Kenyatta come here oh, and yes. talk about Paul Robeson. Yes. You're doing a one woman show about another historic feeling, a person. What's bluntly? What's the point in doing a historic show? Oh, what's the point? So that others know about their struggles, their aspirations, mm -hmm. their achievements, and get inspired by their lives, you know? Yes. Because their lives were not all smooth sailing and a ball of cherries, especially Paul Robeson. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. He was labeled communist. They banned him. They, they also black, um, black loaded, um, blackballed Dorothy yes. in her career where she was out of work. For three years, no films came her way because of her decision to not take the role of the king and I. So they went through hard stuff, but mm. they still rose. They still kept rising. They still kept clawing their way to the top of the industry and in their lives. They kept trying. They kept trying. So it inspires people, and it, and it gives people credence to say, yes, I can do it too. I can do that too, and people need that, especially the yes. young kids. I, I real, real quickly, I, I was teaching, and at the time, Bermuda, we got their first black female premier. Now, the premier of our country is like the president of the United States, mm -hmm. and so I had the newspaper article outside of my door, so anybody walking by could see it, and at the top, I put, daughters also can rise. Girls, you can do whatever and be whatever you want to be. And um, <laughs> the rest is history. Mm. 
you know, so I believe in that. You know, we never would have thought we would have had a female, black female premier in Bermuda. Wow. And we got one. In fact, we had two because after her, there was another There's one. another one. When is the next performance uh, going to be for Dorothy? We don't know yet. Okay. We are working on dotting the I's and crossing the T's. All righty. And, but I know that one performance is sure. It's with the Barbara Morrison's production that she's having in April in recognition of Jazz History Month. By the way, April is Jazz Appreciation Month. So she's having a series of one woman and one man. It also involves a one-man show, um, Sammy Davis Jr. with O Baba, Baba Tunde, and mm -hmm. um, Josephine Baker will be played by Sloane Robinson. Um, she even has a Herb Jeffries. Yes. And Dorothy mm -hmm. was familiar and knew Herb Jeffries. She yes. sang his cowboy boogie song. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm going to be playing Dorothy, and that's going to be my production will be April the 8th at 8 o'clock p.m. Okay. That's when I'll be doing the Dorothy right. again. We'll, we'll yes. get the word out there to our viewers to, to know and, when it comes. Oh, yeah. yes, and stay tuned because, like I said, we're waiting for the I's to be dotted and the T's to be crossed on another run of Lonely Girl. So, okay. <laughs> What about uh, making this play into a movie? What do you think about that? Oh, I think that'll be fantastic. First of all, it'll be a beautiful movie with all the costume and the sets, and I think it would be a first, it'll be the first one-woman musical okay. to be made into a movie. And they could do it so easily, because if they have somebody who can sing, dance, and act, and you can flow with the script, and not make any stops, it'll be a first. They could just set the camera, have a three camera set up, mm -hmm. and have a very, very defined edit sheet and storyboard and just go from camera to camera and do a little editing and they would have it and be able to put it on television. Wow, that would be nice. Yeah, have it in a, you know, film it in a really great setting. They'll probably have to go to a studio to film it, you gotcha. know, rather than a, a theater. But, um, I think it's definitely, definitely doable, and I believe people would come to see it because of Dorothy, mm -hmm. you know, when the word gets out and, and because of the beauty of the film, if they advertise it right, you know, with all the beauty of it yes. and, and the, um, the pulling of her, mm -hmm. you know, the, the conflict, because people like to see conflict, yes, they do. Yes. you know, they like to see, if they advertise it right, focusing on that and her beauty and how she rose up through everything in spite of, people would say, mm, that might, in, their hearts would say, that might inspire me and I think I'm going to go to that movie. Okay. And by the way, I think it could be a seller even if they didn't have a major star in it as the one. Okay. Movie. You got some other <laughs> projects going on currently. Oh, yes. Um, the Old and the New is a, a comedy poetry show I do with Warren Ron. He's a 90 year old writer. Poet. That's why it's called the old and the new. <laughs> and that we're gonna have some dates in Manhattan Beach. Okay. Um, we already worked there at the Vintage Hollywood. We worked at another place, Sarah's Down and Dance in Studio City. Um, June the 10th, I'm going to be at home in Beverly Hills for the brunch, doing a jazz trio. Okay. And that's with Gerald Burrell on drums, Tim McCoy on keys, and Alessandro on bass. Three, three people. And I told you about the Barbara Morrison event for Lonely Girl. In April. In April. Mm -hmm. And then you might get a surprise in February because, as I said, I'm also a writer and I write my own scripts and write my own music and we shall see. Mm. And also, um, I wanted to mention that I'm also a member of Live Choir and if you have their if you have their CD, if you hear their CD, you'll hear jingle bells like it's never heard before, <laughs> and you'll also hear joy to the world like it's never been heard before. It's a wonderful. I have this in my car, and I, especially during Christmas time, I play this all the time. And if you see me in my car bouncing around, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's H.B. Barnum's. Yes, H.B. Barnum's Life Choir. Mm -hmm. Yes, we meet every Tuesday at the uh, Methodist Church up there across from the Rochelle Bell from 7.30 to 9.30. I love going to those rehearsals. It's such a wonderful, joyous workout, first of all, for my vocal cords. Yes. And um, the singers, oh my gosh, when he pulls us together with those harmonies, it's like you've, you're in heaven. I mean, oh, it's a beautiful choir. 
And they are all, some of the members are also featured on my CD, um, the Rainer CD, okay. which is produced, arranged by H.B. Uh, Barnum. Okay. We also are, my brother and I are the first siblings to create a full-length CD of Carpenter's music. Remember the Carpenter's yes, group, brother yes, and sister? Yes. Well, we're the Carpenter's with so called the Rainers. <laughs> what is, what is your brother's name? Brothers Alden Rainer Jr. Okay. Well, Ron, yes. Can you go ahead and run that one for us, sir, right, right now? And here it is. H.B. Barnum and the Life Choir are doing background on the song, Let's Have Christmas Every Day of the Year. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what time of year it is? Yes, it's Christmas, my favorite time of the year. Everybody's green with smiles and good cheer. Children are laughing and playing, opening gifts meet the tree. Oh, so much peace, love, and harmony. One wish on this special day, I close my eyes and here's what I say. Let's have Christmas every day of the year. Why should one day? And I wanted to um, say that may Freddie Burton rest in peace. He's the gentleman that played the Santa in the video. 
very nice man. Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How do you want to be remembered? It's my favorite question. Oh my goodness, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> um, qualities I want to be remembered as an honest person who was helpful to others and who was very caring and very determined um, to achieve goals in life. Who didn't let anybody stop her from reaching her goals in life and tried to help others along the way as she was trying to achieve her goals. Well said. That's how well, And if you don't mind, since you've joined us today, Madam, thank you so very, very much for joining us. Thank today. you. Really, really thank appreciate you it. Thank you so and much. Come on back another time. I love time. flowers, everyone. <laughs> I love surprises. <laughs> Again, you. you said that one more, one more date. Can you give us that date again with Bob Morrison, uh, April? Oh, it's April the 8th Okay. at 8 o'clock p.m. And that's part of the Jazz, uh, Jazz Appreciation Month, which is April, by the way, everyone. So really appreciate jazz in April. And um, my website yes. is WandaRayWillis.org. Okay. And June 10th at home in Beverly right. Hills, I'll be doing jazz for the Jazz Brunch. Jazz trio, smoking jazz trio. Oh, right. Jarrell, Tim, and Alejandro. And stay tuned for some surprise in February because I do right. And let's have Christmas every day of the year. Oh, this wonderful feeling that everybody seems to get around Christmas time. That's why I love Christmas. So let's have Christmas every day of the year. All right. Now you're going home to Bermuda for the holidays? Yes. My flight is 745 tomorrow morning. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, oh. Gonna be with family. I was here alone last Christmas, uh -huh. so but with Coco, my doggy Coco. Right. Um, so this Christmas I get to go home and be with family. So I'm really excited about going. Well, please give time. our best to the whole family. Happy yes. holidays to you. And again, thank you so very, very much for coming today, oh. Wanda Ray Willis. God bless you and keep thank on doing you. what you're doing. And for you guys and ladies, guys, girls thank out you. there, we want to thank you so much. And join us next week as we do our thing here on Actors' Choice. I'm your host, Ron Brewington. We'll see you next time.